In this video, I will be covering my Pokemon Organizer spreadsheet, and so we're actually just going to hop right into it. I have updated it now for version 2.0.0, and so I'll be quickly presenting the sheet in general, and then I have made a copy for myself for personal use and put in all my information. So prepared essentially, my whole collection has been put into this sheet so you can see a little bit how it can be used. So let's see if we can um, open up that screen. There we go. And just to make it easy, I'm gonna take off the pointer here. I do think you can see, you can. All right, nice. So welcome to the Pokemon Organizer version 2.0. And yes, I have remembered to turn off the double audio. All right, so the first page here is called the dashboard. And the section to the left here is for ingredients. And the section to the right is for berry specialists. In general, the way that this is organized is the area to the left is the primary farmer. And then you have a secondary farmer. And so, for example, here on the master document, you can see the Vika Vault is the primary coffee farmer. And then Agron is, as an example, put in here as the secondary. And the same goes here. You can put in some secondary Pokemon for whatever you want. And now that we had another new ingredient, I have decided to just make a placeholder area down here for in case we get new ingredients in the future then it's a little bit easier for me to update this sheet because this took a lot of work. I had to rework a lot of code and uh, make it all work. So this dashboard is just a visual. It presents what information you put into the control panel. And so here we have the control panel. This is free ready for you. Uh, now you don't have access to this sheet right here. And so we will play around a little bit more with the document that I have prepared already because these cells become drop down menus that are pre filled. So you can put in the name of the Pokemon and then based on the name of the Pokemon, you get the exact ingredients that they can actually find at level 30 and at level 60. And then the same thing happens over here and the column for the Pokemon, the berry they do, and then you can mark if they have berry finding or if they've helping bonus. I like to have Altaria here as an example just because I've sorted these by berry value. And I have an Altaria with berry finding helping bonus and it, I like making people jealous when they see that. So we also have a targets page. Here I have included every single Pokemon with pre-evolutions. Personally, I don't like putting non-meta relevant pre-evolutions here. But some of you like to put, let's say, a Raticate up here in your collection. You already have a perfect Raticate, so you move this up here by just clipping it out and pasting it in over here. But you don't have a Butterfree, so you put a Caterpie here in the Priority Hunt Targets list. It's just what you prefer. Uh, we'll see how I've done it in my own document. Then we have the Location document. and or page rather. In the A column, you put the name of a Pokemon and then you see where it shows up and what kind of sleep type it is. And I've made it so that you can have up to 30 Pokemon here. Probably not necessary, but kind of like this easy access overview of just multiple Pokemon. And you can kind of keep track of your targets. Now, I don't know how to make this automatic. Uh, keep in mind, this is a spreadsheet. <laughs> It's not a full-on website, and this is just a picture you're moving around. Uh, there's no code behind that. And, um, yeah, so you will have to manually write in the name here, but it's a pre-filled drop-down menu, so it should be really fast. It's basically AR, Enter for Aeron, for example. Probably something like that. There's also an Events tab, and this Events tab is also a drop-down menu. We'll see that in the main... Um, I'm not even the main, this is the main document. This is the master document, but I've made a personal copy. So this dropdown has all the events and that event data is put in this huge file. And so 
you can just go back in time if you are curious about the distribution of boosted spawns. And we have sleep styles. Now, Banana Tanks has made a really, really nice spreadsheet for keeping track of sleep styles. And I'm very satisfied with that because personally, I don't really care too much. But I know that some of you guys really, really like having a spreadsheet to track all that stuff with. And I think for now, if you want a simple list, then this will do wonders. Uh, if you want something more complicated than Banana Tanks, uh, check that spreadsheet out. It's crazy. Okay, I think uh, that was it for the master document. And uh, yeah, there are some how to use. You want to go up to file and make a copy. So to do that, you have to be logged in, of course. And as always, you can leave a comment on this video if you have any questions on how to use that. Now for the real deal of this video. And yeah, you can still hear my Snorlax eating in the background. It's ridiculous. I had several thousand berries, I'm pretty sure, stacked up uh, because it was at 999 for a long time and I like to have some background music on. It's the new thong, new, uh, not thong, but song. Oops. Uh, yeah, so the old gold power plant is going to have a little bit of uh, an eating sound unless somehow it go out here maybe. Yeah, I think that's a good solution. And we don't have to listen to Snorlax. How about that? <laughs> All right, so let's hop back into it. So this is my personal copy. You can see that I uh, was supposed to be logged in, uh, but uh, I'm not. Uh, this is because I'm doing some trickery on the tech side, so I can't actually edit. But this is Nerth's copy of the Pokemon Organizer. So I have put in my whole collection by using this control panel that I mentioned. So for example, where you can see these drop downs, they are pre-filled. So, only Pokemon that can find coffee will show up in the coffee cell. And we can put in Vika Volt here, for example. And then when we go back to the dashboard, we can see the Vika Volt showing up right here. And this is actually a really nice overview too, to submit, let's say, you fill out this document, and then you go to the North Heart Discord, which is looking like this. Then we can also put up the pointer. If you want a more thorough opinion on what you should do, it may be good to have an up-to-date dashboard that you post into the Rate My Mon X channel at the same time. Because then me and other more experienced players, or just fellow players for that matter, like it's nice to have some um, opinions to share with one another on like, what am I supposed to do? I do that all the time. And um, it's a really good way to learn about the game and really consider things that there's just too many factors all at the same time and to consider them all is kind of mind-blowing. So to narrow it down a little bit, have a nice way to present it all, that uh, can be quite useful. So I do recommend to fill out this and use it. I know also Brovini and his Discord has been very happy with this um, document overall as a tool because it's a lot easier for him to um, come with recommendations and suggestions and hence Discord based on what people are filling into my spreadsheet. So that's that's pretty cool. I love seeing that. So yeah, we can go back to the control panel here. Uh, so this is my personal collection. I don't yet have a Vika Volt. I would like one though, uh, but I just don't have one yet. And then, yeah, you can see here it is divided by the primary and the secondary farmer. I do have a secondary green grass soybeans, for example, in Tyranitar. And I also have a Mona Beans Golem. I'm pretty set on beans. And then if we just look at the dashboard, we can see where the empty spots are. Eggs. Big problem for me. Sausage, I haven't cared too much about, honestly. I just haven't cooked any of the big curry dishes because I've been lacking on the corn, which I recently got. And yeah, I could potentially also look for a Dragonite. We'll uh, get back to that once we head over to the targets here. And I would like a coffee Pokemon. I'm pretty set on the leaks. I didn't put up Ditto here as a... Um, that's actually wrong. That should be leaks. And then I guess I can put up the Ditto. It's just I kind of want to just hold that spot for Coquable. I would like to get a Coquable at some point for more leaks. But uh, yeah, Ditto and Dugtrio are doing just fine as is for now. The eggs is my big pain point. So eggs 
coffee and sausage. So I'll probably go for mono sausage agron, as you can see. And I want the Delibird and I want the Vika Volt. Aside from that, I'm pretty set. I don't care too much about potatoes currently. My ABC Venusaur is very close to level 60, so I'm be I'm gonna be pretty set there. And then actually for cacao, I'm pretty set too. I'm, I have a decent Absol. Uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, I will appreciate the extra cacao coming from the Blastoise. And I also have some cacao from me coming from the Sylveon, which is also doing a lot of supplemental milk. So once the Blastoise and the Venusaur hits level 60, that's going to be super nice. Not a big fan of oil. Maybe I'll look for, you know, double oil shanks. I doubt it. And uh, yeah, que uh, Silver Queen is amazing at corn. So that's one of my top all-time Pokemon. Now we can scroll, scroll over to the Berry Specialist. You can see I've got two Altaria with Berry Finding and Helping Bonus, which is very nice. I am lacking quite a bit on the Berry Department, as you can see. A lot of my Berry Specialists are secondary uh, specialists, like the Tyranitar, Victory Bell, Gengar, Ditto, Togekiss I'm not even using, Lucario. I do have a Berry Finding Mankey, but I'm kind of just holding off on the investment. And so hopefully in the future I can find a better one. Same here as with the Radita. And had I included four slots here, you would have seen I have a Berry Finding Kolava and a Berry Finding Vulpix in the pipeline for my anti-team. So I'll think about that in the future if I ever decide on making up an upgrade to this spreadsheet or if that's just down the line, a project for my website. So I think at that point we have covered the dashboard. Uh, you fill in the stuff here and it just shows up here and it's nice. You can take a screenshot share it with your friends and it's just a good uh, thing. So same thing here, pre-filled dropdowns. It has every Pokemon listed comprehensively and then it's just a yes, no thingy here. All right, over to the targets. Now that you've seen my collection, I have structured my Pokemon in the following way. I've gotten rid of every pre-evolution except some of these that are meta relevant to some extent. And this is what we're left with. So in the top area here, the collection area, a Pokemon that I already have. In the targets, I have Pokemon that I don't have. And I mean, I do have a Dalibird that is double apple that I've even snuck in here at the secondary slot, even though it is not level 30 yet. But uh, it's just one of those ways you can use the the sheet here. I'm hoping to find a busted apple for Coco. So yeah, back to the column. So up here, you have your collection. Bottom here, you have your targets. And then there's another section. I have organized it by berry specialists, ingredient specialists, and skill specialists. It's kind of funny though, just out of just being funny, I put Lux right here in Never Hunting. This is probably more realistically here, uh, but for the most part, uh, this row here, I'm just not going to touch again. Don't really see the need for Marowak. I'm not a huge fan of the Vigoroth. I already caught a very, very just pristine slacking, despite the fact that I don't really care about slacking. It was just caught on a whim. Comfey outclassed by Beware. Primorant, I already have a decent Toxic Croak, and if anything, I can do a second ditto that also has a lot of good stuff going for it. Now I'm hearing that the sound is being funny, so we're going to pause that for a little bit and talk about my priority. So you can see this top row here are Pokemon that I'm really interested in catching and that I'm actively hunting. So that is the Halloween Pikachu. Hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers that Halloween is coming up and that they will do a week-long event where the hat, Halloween hat Pikachu comes up again. It is a very specialist. It's decently fast. It kind of rivals a, a Jolteon maybe in very output, but it's stronger and it's nicer. So you can put it on a Raikou team. I would just like to have one. I really dropped the ball on it last year and 
yeah, hoping to redo that this year. And then I want an Onyx and a Steelix. These are super expensive. So I don't know how realistic that is for me right now. And then Meganium is a Pokemon that I would like long term. It's just I'm kind of done with Lapis Lakeside for now. So I, I want it. It's just it, it's not even that I'm interested or low priority. It's just this probably should go down here, but it feels bad to put the Meganium down with Eradicate. So it's just it's up here. Priority, you can see I've still got some things to figure out here with the ingredient specialist. I don't have sausage, coffee, apple, or eggs. This I should probably put down here, to be honest with you. I still want the Dalla Bird. And so, I know the Quagsire is busted long term for the Suicune, so that's not just interested. I do want this one and I do go for it. And then, I secretly think the Swalot is starting to approach A tier. It's been creeping up on us, and I think over time we'll see more features surrounding the Dream Shards, and so, yeah, I just want to be future-proof there. Though, one thing I can mention, the Not Hunting Bracket. Umbreon, Jolteon, Espeon, I just, I have enough with the Sylveon, Flareon that I got. These Pokemon are interesting for one reason alone, and that is they all have Mega Evolutions. I don't put Sableye in Never Hunting because you never know. And I mean, if Sableye gets a Mega Evolution that's pretty cracked, then maybe I go back and hunt it. Same for the Heracross. These Pokemon just have no future unless they have some crazy meta balance. Now, Vigoroth is good, don't get me wrong, but for me, with my current setup over here, I'm just, I'm personally not going to go for it, but this would probably be low priority for most, I, I would guess. Maybe also this, but uh, yeah. Confei, they would need something to make them more favorable. And essentially, what I'm getting at here, which is actually not accurate, this should be up here because this row is my Pramomatic row. I can use these candies to. Uh, Fuel the Chromomatic, and then, yeah, we don't have to go through every single Pokemon here in detail. Obviously, this is more my collection for my overview, but I just wanted to give you a brief understanding of like how to use a setup like this if you would find it interesting. I have a very strict standard on my Berry Specialists. They kind of just have to have Berry Finding, Helping Bonus, and maybe also a decent nature to really be placed up here. And if you want it to be really funny, you could always do this too. You have two Altaria. But uh, I don't want to mess too, around, too much around uh, with that. So yeah. That is the targets. And then we have the location. I talked about drop downs. There are drop downs here too. And I like that you can just put in the names very easily. And you also get this column by column where you can find them. And also what kind of sleep style they are. So. On the Old World Power Plant, you can see I'm really interested in the Slumbering. I find Aeron, and I find Steelix, and I find Cleffa. But I'm also interested in the Dozing, and maybe also the Snoozing. And at that point, you see I have a good mix here. So in the short term, then Old World Power Plant, really nice. Although, I'm probably going to go back to Snowdrop Tundra again to look for that bird, because I'm really interested in finding an egg Pokemon. And, uh... Yeah, that 75 new cap on the area bonus is going to be huge for me. So yeah, this one is, should be very self-explanatory. And I have gone to great lengths at making sure that this is accurate. So if you ever, for whatever reason, find an error, um, let me know in a comment on the YouTube channel as a whole. Uh, new comments just get put on top in the queue, so they show up no matter which video it does, is on. Uh, or you can send me a message on Discord. Alright, events is pretty cool, in my opinion. It has the... more or less. I haven't, in the past, added events such as this where there are no sleep styles that get a boosted spawn. But now that I think about it, it could be kind of nice because then you can go back and see, oh yeah, there were no boosted spawns. So it's kind of like a, a negative flag in a way. Okay, so I even have the Halloween 20... 
23 event. And this I had to dig in the Japanese Pokemon sleep website to find and translate because some of these old events uh, are not ca uh, cataloged um, anymore <clears throat> on the English website. Which is one of the reasons I also decided to do this so that we have it cataloged. Now obviously Serebi and the rest are kind of doing that thing where they are also uh, collecting all that data so that is nice but this is a very handy tool. You don't really have to scour the search engine to find it. It's just you click the drop down and there it is. Now, oh, I want another event like this. Like this was my event, holiday 2023. I was looking for the Delibird and I have since. So maybe by Christmas, I can find me a Delibird. That would be super nice. Okay, sleep styles. We already covered this in the other part of this video. So probably won't you go through this again. Uh, so yeah, let me know in a comment if you will be using this document or if you have any feedback on it. Uh, long term, I am developing nerthheart.com. I'm hoping to build the feature set that I'm exploring here in the Google spreadsheet as full on features on the <laughs> website. Now, that's not a promise that will happen. Uh, for now, the main part is just building a wiki type site and then uh, wherever I can um, get to with my programming chops eventually. Maybe something like this could be nice and maybe a simple profile setup, log in with your Discord or something and stuff is, uh, you know, saved for you. And as we have version updates and things, you don't have to convert from one sheet to the other because that is something that is maybe a bit of a hassle with this one, although it should be pretty straightforward. Now, between version 1.10 and 2.0, there's a little bit of a gap here. Uh, so for the most part, you can just copy this column, go to the other sheet, paste it in, and do the same on these white columns. I've colored all these white so that they should stand out a little bit. And these are the columns you want to copy over into the new uh, document if you want to transfer. But for the most part, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, there's probably a lot of changes in your account too, so it's nice to just go over it every now and then uh, afresh. So, yeah. Just curious to hear what you guys think about it. I probably spent the better of 50, 100 hours on that uh, spreadsheet, so if it is of any use, that makes me happy. So, yeah. Hope you've enjoyed this video and the content here on the channel overall. And you can leave a like as always if you indeed have enjoyed it. So let me know and let YouTube know and everyone else that it was worthwhile. All right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you around.